Hello, hello, hello. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Welcome to the Kathy J Show. I am Kathy J. I'm so happy that you're joining me today on St. Patty's Day, everybody. Thank you to everybody who's also been sending us so much love on social media. Shout out to everybody that's staying up to date on the website, kathyjshow.com. We love you guys. Thank you so much. All right, so as I mentioned, it's St. Patty's Day, everybody, and I'm Irish, so I'm going to definitely be celebrating today. I celebrate, like, today I look forward to St. Patty's Day, um, especially when I was single. <laughs> All right, but Chef David Bondarchuk is also going to be joining us. Chef David's here, yay! Yeah. He's going to be joining us later in the kitchen to cook up some Irish dishes, but first... I figured, you know what? Maybe it's time for us all to get a little educated about why we look forward to St. Patrick's Day so much. The typical ways to celebrate here in America, we gotta grab a beer, get out a green beer, it's gotta be a green beer, Guinness car bomb something, and you gotta go out and just celebrate with friends. Why, why do we do that? Joining me now for the history of St. Patty's Day, we have Alan Growark here, everybody. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Now, Alan, everybody, genuine Irishman. How yeah. are you today, Alan? Not too bad. Thanks for Caddy for having me on the show. I'm so excited that you're mm -hmm. here. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Ireland, uh, as you can guess, I suppose. I came here from uh, about 24 years ago from part of the southwest of Ireland, a county called Kerry. And it's on the west coast, so it gets a lot of rain, and that's why Ireland is so green. I suppose yeah. that's where we get the, the green pa Paddy's Day from. But I decided 24 years ago I was going to swap the 300 days of rain for 300 <laughs> days of sunshine. Yes, right. And I enjoy still going back every summer and visiting family and friends. But uh, yeah, that's my story. Is it summer the whole, I mean, is it rainy the whole, all four seasons? Do you have four seasons in we Ireland? We don't have a summer. Oh, yes. you don't have a we summer. We don't have a summer, yeah. And uh. so if, it's, if, it's, if it rains for too long, people complain. And then if it's like two days of good weather, oh, we miss the old rain, you know? <laughs> Nobody's happy. Yes. Okay, so tell me, um, what is... St. Patrick's Day. How, why do we celebrate right. it? Well, as I, as I mentioned before the show, Kathy, that St. Patrick wasn't even Irish. I know. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? He, he was, was English. He was English, <laughs> and he was captured as a 16-year-old as a, as a year old by some Irish pirates, brought to Ireland. He was tending sheep for six years, and then he escaped back to England and became a priest. Okay. And then had a vision, like a lot of us have when we've had a few drinks, I suppose. Absolutely. And he decided that the, oh, he, he was told that the Irish needed him. And he came back to Ireland and converted the Irish to Christianity. Ah. So they have that saying about like the Irish had, um, there was the, he drove the snakes out of Ireland. Yes. But the snakes were just the pagan gods, the metaphor for them. And so that's what he was driving out of Ireland. That is so funny because I, my family is Irish and they, mm -hmm. um, Rosanna Rose Mulligan came over Ellis Island from Ireland and yeah. she always, like through the history of our, of our uh, Irish relatives, it always, they always say, they didn't leave Ireland because of the snakes. They left Ireland because of the Catholicism, because they were Protestant Irish and Irishmen. So when right. they landed up in upstate New York, they're one of, because it's Irish usually goes with Catholic. And this, my family is Irish Protestant Methodist, and they created a whole little area in upstate New York, so much so that it was called Irish Town. Wow. And so, and you had to be Irish to be buried in the Irish cemetery, and it was the Irish, cem you know. Right. So, I though that is crazy that that is yeah. where St. Patrick's Day came from, and my family's been talking about it their whole right. time. So we had different. We have a very complicated history of emigration, but we had different ways of emigration. And the Northern Irish, who were more of the Protestant Irish, who came across to upstate New York and even into Ontario and stuff. There's a lot of Irish-sounding names of northern towns in Ontario. Oh yes, I for know. sure. Yeah. That's crazy, and it's all yeah. from from I Ireland. That's yes. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Since so we have you, I would love it because you do sing songs, right? Mm -hmm. Could you sing us an Irish song on our way out? Yes, I would. I mean, the, one of the songs I was going to sing was, it's about 200 years old. It's about Patrick arriving in Ireland. It's a bit humorous in, in, in degree. So I'll give you a blast of a verse of that anyway. Um, you heard, I suppose, long ago, how the snakes in the man are most antic. He marched to the county Mayo and ordered them all into the Atlantic. Hence, never use water to drink. The people of Ireland determine with mighty good we'll reason, I think. Kathy J. J. Oakwood Homes is an official partner of the Kathy J. Show. Oakwood Homes, building happiness. Oh, dandelion, yellow as gold, what do you do all day? Just sit here on the cold green grass till the children come to play. When the children come to play, they pick me up with their dimpled hands and blow my hair away. <laughs> <laughs> By Robert Louis 
Stevenson. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Kathy J Show. That was my Grandma Grace, Amazing Grace, Grace Lavery, everybody. And that was her dandelion. Uh, she always recited that poem. It was right by Robert Louis Stevenson. I love you, Grandma. God bless you up in heaven. So everybody, before the break, we learned the authentic story of St. Patrick's Day and St. Patrick going back to help the people of Ireland. Um, and so I'm here today with Alan Groark, yay, the president of the Irish Network of Colorado. Yes. So I'm dying to know, do they celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Ireland? We do celebrate it. I mean, similar today than, than, than it, is in, it is in America. But when I was growing up, it was a different story. We didn't have our first parade in Ireland until 1931, while the first one in America was 250 years ago. Yeah, isn't that funny? And when I was growing up, you would get up in the morning. It was a religious holiday. The pubs didn't, didn't open on St. Patrick's Day until the 1970s. What? So there was there was no idea of green beer, and so you would put on a. My mother would always have some sprig of shamrock, put it on here. You would head off to mass, watch a service, come back, maybe have a feed of bacon and cabbage or a leg of lamb. Yeah. And then you would turn on the television and see what the Americans were doing. <laughs> see, they were dying the river green in Chicago and the massive parades over yes. in in New York and right. Boston. Our poodles are getting painted green. <laughs> Our horses are painted green. Right. You're absolutely right. Why do you think the stereotype comes that um, all Irish people are just fun drunk? Why do, where do you think that comes from? Because my grandma Grace, she never drank or smoked or anything. She was definitely Protestant, Irish. No, we definitely, we do like our drink. Yes. I mean, and we like a, pop, a good pint of Guinness, which you, you can't really get here in America. It's only in Ireland that we go back for it. But I, I don't know. I mean, the stereotype, it's just, uh, there's a lot of things that have been brought over, like the leprechaun and the greenness and stuff. Even the green for St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick was only known as, it was blue up oh. till 200 years ago. The Knights of St. Pa Patrick were blue. But then we had an uprising as we did against the British. And we said, what would be a good color? And we went with green, the wearing of the green. And so when America heard about that, let's get this done. Yes, right, right. <laughs> let's, let's we'll commercialize it. We'll figure out a way to drink. Right. All right. So um, you also are the president of the Irish Network of Colorado. Very cool. Uh -huh. Do you have to be Irish to join the Irish Network of Colorado? You do not. We have a lot of we have a lot of Irish and Irish Americans in there, but maybe it's an excuse for coming together to have Irish themed events and to reminisce about Ireland. So there's a lot of people who don't have any Irish roots, but they are curious about Ireland and our culture. So and they love coming to our events. It could be a rambling house where we're having singing and storytelling awesome. amongst ourselves. Yes. Hist historical in nature, about the Irish of the history of Irish in Colorado or in Ireland. Um, even whiskey tastings and who doesn't like a good whiskey tasting? I am a whiskey girl. I'll tell you what, Alan. So you also right now are working on a project in Leadville. What's going on there? Yeah, we've been working on this for the past four years and we're hoping to unveil a memorial this year to the Irish who were living in Leadville in the, the time of the silver boom in the late 1800s. Wow. There is a cemetery there where there is in the back in a pauper section, there's 1300, over 1300 unmarked graves which are sunken now and now a forest has grown up around it. And we realize that 70% of those buried in those graves are Irish. Whoa. The average age was 23. It was Whoa. horrific what happened back in the, you know, some, some came to Ireland for the American dream. Unfortunately, a lot of these didn't make it. So we want to remember and recognize them. They're all in unmarked graves. We're going to name these unnamed. We're going to have panels with all their names That's surrounding awesome. them. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's a yeah. great project. Yeah. Um, great passion project. Like yeah. It needs to be done. Put, give them the names and respect. Everybody, Alan actually has a way that you can help out the Irish Network of Colorado. You can make a donation. They would love your help, everybody. All you have to do for this memorial, please head to irishnetworkco.com and uh, stick around, everybody. Alan, we're going to be baking next. Is that okay? Can you do that one Irish thing, us out to the break, the Irish uh, prayer, the to your back, the sun, I wish yes. you this. Go ahead. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. Hold on a second. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the, may the rain soft, fall softly on your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand, but may he not crush too tightly on it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back with Chef David. <laughs> Ramos Law is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. He's a medical doctor and a lawyer. Ramos Law, what makes us different makes us better. Kathy J, <laughs> it's happening. That's how I come in. Everybody, happy St. Patty's Day. Woo! Kathy J Show hanging out with Chef David from Yay! Scratch, Scratch Catering <laughs> Services. And look, we have a little guest today, Chef David. That's my oh, daughter, Avery. Welcome, Avery. Okay, so <laughs> what are we cooking today? She, When she heard that you were cooking, she was like, I got to come. So what are we doing today? So for St. Patrick's Day, this is a Bailey's Irish Cream Cheesecake. 
All what right. You, now admit it. You're shocked I'm doing a cake, aren't you? I, I am, because Dave is not the best with cakes, everybody, but I'm ready for I'm you. I'm not, but this is a home run. Well, cheesecake is different than cake cake. Okay, okay? yes, it is. Right. <laughs> cake, 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 So cake. the first thing I want to talk about this um, cake is the special kind of pan. It is a spring form pan, and it is loaded because it has a false bottom. But this little hinge here on the side, when it's opened, it releases the cake, and when it's closed, it the outer circle closes. Yeah. and it's all one thing. I remember those pans. My mom had those pans. Those are cool. So what you're going to want to do to make this cake is you're going to want to take heavy duty foil, a double layer, and I always do the shiny side in okay. because my mom always said that the shiny side reflects the heat. I am so <laughs> glad you said that little point because I'm always wondering which side goes and out. I don't know if but that's, that's like that's true, but my mom said it, so it's true. There you go. All so, right. So we're going to do a double layer and you want to wrap this entire pan up just like this, turning as you're going and wrapping it up. Why? Well, because... Why do I wrap, wrap the outside of a pan? Later on, we're going to bake this in a bain-marie, and I'll explain that okay, when we get there, ahead. but this okay. is very important. All right. So now you're going to make your um, graham cracker crust, okay. and you want to use regular graham crackers, not the cinnamon and sugar, not the honey, uh, the yep. original graham crackers. So you're going to want to make that and put that in here. Okay. You're going to bake this at 350, to five, 350 degrees for 15 minutes, and when it comes out of the oven, it looks just like this. See how it's golden brown Voila. and all of that. Okay. okay. Oh, it is really nice. So this is 12 graham crackers, which is a, the equivalent of two cups when it's pulsed, six tablespoons of butter. There is <laughs> there is eight <laughs> tablespoons in an entire stick. So what you're going to do is you're going to take off two tablespoons, grease your pan, and the other six is going to be melted for your graham cracker crust. Does that know. make sense? So, what you grease so with it's one stick only. Perfect. Okay? Perfect. Now you've got this. Now let's make our base. Are you ready to help me, Avery? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> oh, look at that. I love that you go on a diet and then you have <laughs> Chef David come in here. Mo butter, mo better. This recipe calls for seven sticks of cream cheese. Oh my gosh, you got that yummy Wisconsin cream cheese <laughs> exactly. in here. Exactly. All right. So, and you're going to want to use a 10 inch spring form pan. Do you want to help me, Avery? Yeah, he's doing that. And you right. just put this all in your electric mixer. All of this is room temperature, so it's going to blend easier. Okay. And so you just put all of this in there. Now with the cream cheese, yes. you want to add two and a quarter cups of sugar. Do you there want you to go. pour that in on that Be side, careful, Avery? Avery? Careful, <laughs> Avery. While she's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add one half cup of all-purpose flour. Good, good. I'm going to add one cup a Bailey's Irish cream. Okay, that's what I'm smelling. That is so good. You know I was about to drink that and while you gonna were. And it's going to cook out. Oh. It's just for flavor, y'all. Okay. And um, also five eggs. Now, I add these typically one at a time as it's beating, but right. this is live TV. So we're going we in. we got to go with it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. And. Just let it go. All right. So. A lot of times people have problems with cheesecakes because they are they crack on top or they separate. Yes. My secret for the best cheesecake is to add one cup of sour cream to your base. Ooh. This will help it not to crack. Why? Because it just keeps a little moisture in there? I think so, yeah. I don't I'm not sure why it's that's a, a main trick, trick but I, it's a main trick for me. You learned it, I'll use it. <laughs> All right. See, you Avery, all you have to do is just let it whip. What do you think? I think that's amazing. Because usually I have. <laughs> Doesn't it smell good? Yes. Oh my God. So we're just going to let this whip for until it comes just together. Now, remember, we did add that half cup of all purpose flour. So we do not want to over mix this, but we all want it to come together in an even consistency. Okay. We got like, we got about a minute and a half. That's fine. Right. So once this is done beating, you're going to pour it into this pan yeah. and you're going to bake it at, th um, you're going to put it in this pan. Now, I, what I do is I just use the turkey roaster yes. and start a kettle of water boiling. Pour the water in there. The water needs to come up to about half the pan. This is the Ban Marie. Okay. Ban Marie is like Marie's bath, as in Marie Antoinette. Oh, okay, <laughs> gotcha. So we're going to put this in there. You're going to bake it at 350 degrees for 45 minutes, then reduce the oven temperature to 325 degrees and let it bake for another 45 minutes. Goodness. And then you're going to use this handy dandy um, <laughs> wooden spoon. Careful and now. What you're going to do yes. is you're going to turn off the oven and leave the cheesecake set in the oven with this in the door. 
Okay, so okay. a little air comes in. Yes. A little cooling down. Okay. Then you move it to the fridge, and when it comes out, you can make the ganache or you can't, but this is it! This is amazing. Should All we right, slice? Yes, yeah, slice it oh out, my everybody. Gosh, it and is not St. Patrick's Day without Bailey's Irish Cream and Wisconsin Cheese. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. When we come back, okay, keep cutting it, everybody. When we come back, uh, Alan's coming back to oh! join us. Ah, look at that beautiful piece of pie. You gotta try it. I totally will try it. All right, everybody. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you, Chef David. <laughs> Thank you. All right, before I eat this, I want to tell you that we got to talk about the Colorado Lottery. So, why is March right now so important for the Colorado Lottery? I'll give you the answer after the break. Oh my God, I went to. Oh my Welcome back to the Kathy J Show, everybody. So before the break, I asked you, why is March so important to the Colorado Lottery? Well, it's because we learned this the other day. March is Problem Gambling Awareness Month, and they want to make sure everybody is out there playing responsibly. Everybody, happy St. Patty's Day. I have Chef David <laughs> here. I have my daughter, Avery, and I have Alan. He is the president of the network, uh, Irish Network of Colorado. Thank you so much for being here. All right, Chef David, now it's Irish beer cheese yes all right yes and here's the thing i asked alan i go do you guys have beer cheese in ireland never heard of it never heard of it <laughs> I'm, I'm learning so I'm, I'm here 24 years and the first time i heard of beer cheese so i'm looking forward to it <laughs> another Jeff american, it's american thing. irish <laughs> exactly all right what do we got what do we got here david all right so again our friends at wisconsin cheese sent us all of this so yes. what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um again one uh, stick of the cream cheese. Okay. And what I do is I just line one of these crock pot uh, pots with a plastic bag because this cheese tends to be really messy, uh -huh. especially when it kind of burns to the sides. Yes, and that's no how one, you keep it clean. And no one wants it sticking <laughs> in the, like soaking in their sink for two days. That is so I smart. Don't. I don't either. Okay, so what do we do next? So start off with it with cream cheese. W then we're going to do one pound of white cheddar. This is a sharp cheddar. Do you like cheese, Alan? I love That's one I thing I I do love is cheese. I, I, I like cheese and I like beer. So I like where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So one pound of grated um, Irish cheddar. Uh -huh. And then um, to that, I'm going to add a nice melting cheese. Yum. This is a Grand Cru, but you can also use a, a Gruyere, whatever uh, you have, just a really good, nice melting cheese. Grand Cru. Have you ever heard of Grand Cru? <laughs> no, it's okay. too, fan too fancy you for me, I think. Me? Wisconsin. Okay, go ahead. So this is a half teaspoon of black pepper. We're just going to kind of season it. Just right, dump it, it in, in there. there. All right. Yay. Perfect. Nice. Thank you. And uh, one teaspoon of kosher salt. Uh -huh. And two tablespoons of just a gray um, uh, mustard Dijon. Do you have any gray poupon? Not the mustard. <laughs> we are not a fan of I'm not You're a fan not of the mustard. mustard. Not either, no. Well, it mixes in. Just, you'll, you'll try it. There's too, there's too much flavor in that for us. No. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> Because right, they like the potatoes plain. Yeah, and they didn't like the British. Up, yeah. <laughs> so, and now we're going to add three fourths of a cup of a Irish pale ale. Now, if you want to use Guinness beer, which is a d darker, richer beer, substitute the um, white cheddar for the entire recipe and don't include the. Uh, Gruyere or the Grand oh, Cru, if you okay, will. Okay, all right. So just go ahead and pour that in there. Now, this is done in an hour. We're already done, Kath. Are You're going to put it? the lid on there, and every 10 or 15 minutes, give it a stir, and uh, voila, here is the beer, wow. beer cheese. Now, this is great with Irish nachos. This is great on corned beef sliders. Put it on a pretzel bun burger, or just dip pretzel bites in it. Let's try it. Yeah, grab These those are, chips. It's the best with the kettle <laughs> chips. Just go. Go Kay. for it. All right, grab can, a chip. Can you explain, can, can you explain to, to me and, and the audience at home, what are... Irish nachos. <laughs> Irish nachos are typically made with kettle chips, which is a russet potato, potato Ireland. Okay. Potato, okay, potato. I'm, I'm, I know where you're going. It's got the diced um, uh, corned beef, some a green onion, mm. all of that on top. This is a wow. great dip. Whether you're celebrating, uh, you know, football, tailgating, whatever. Okay. okay. What do you think? This is a great dip. It is really yummy. I could, I definitely want to put a pretzel <laughs> in that. I want to put anything I can in that. Are you, are you proud of me? I'm trying something that's... I'm, uh, I'm going outside my comfort zone. Yay! I'm very proud of you. I'm very proud of you. Happy St. Patrick's Day to America. <laughs> no, I mean... Yeah. Me go, uh, you, don't want, you don't taste the mustard. No. No. Mm -mm. No. I taste the cheese. <laughs> that, no, I told you you wouldn't taste and it. And we don't taste the beer. We'll, we'll only feel it later, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all cooked out and everything, but it's amazing. And I hope you'll have the most amazing... Um, 
St. Patrick's Day. And if you ever need catering, give me a call. Scratch Catering Services or visit our website, scratchcateringservices.com. Absolutely. And I can't let you leave without you showing your luck of gold. Oh, shoes yes. Okay, I'm going to take a box. Okay. Look <laughs> at shoes. I'm impressed. It's St. Patrick's Day. Where do you shop? I need to know what that <laughs> yes. is. Yes, every president of the Irish Network of Colorado needs these uh, pot is. of luck shoes, everybody. Pot of gold <laughs> shoes. Everybody, I just want to say thank you so much. And everybody, just enjoy St. Patty's Day. And it's with a D, not a T. <laughs> yes, Patty. Patty. If you're going to say it at all, it's Patty. Patty, yeah. everybody. Get it right today. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your family and friends. May the luck of the Irish be with you today. Thank you, Chef David. Thank you. Thank you.